Mike Perlman here for Techno Buffalo with a review of a long-awaited, coveted full-frame DSLR. Yes, the almighty Canon EOS 5D Mark III. Does the Mark III hit the Mark III? Find out in my full review. Get out your drool buckets and sedatives, folks. It's the Canon EOS 5D Mark III review. Alrighty then, here at first base we're gonna talk about the Mark III's design. Now the most exciting thing on the Mark III is its new dual card slots. Here we can house an SD and CF card, just like the Nikon D800. Now you notice an all-purpose lock where the live view switch used to be. There's a new live view switch at the top next to the viewfinder. This is for photo and video recording with the start-stop button embedded in the middle. Another welcome addition to the Mark III was its headphone jack. Now I could actually listen to the audio that I was monitoring in conjunction with the mic jack which allowed for an external microphone. Now compared to the Mark II and the Nikon D800 which have 921K displays, the Mark III has a nice 3.2 inch 1,040,000 pixel display. We have a nice 100% coverage optical viewfinder and it's a new intelligent viewfinder according to Canon. We can now see grid lines and AF points on the viewfinder. However, I noticed one thing, the vertical horizontal meter that can be viewed on the LCD screen cannot be viewed on the viewfinder and you can actually do that on the Nikon D800. The Canon EOS 5D Mark III also lacks a pop-up flash which is something offered by the D800. Another new addition right next to the shutter button is a function button. This actually dictates the focus area selection points but it can be customized to other things as well. Now you notice that Canon got rid of the creative auto mode which is fine because nobody really ever used it and for navigation we have the same quick control dial, main dial, and 8-way multi-controller. Now I love the dials on the Mark III just like I did on the Mark II. However, I really would have taken Nikon's 8-way directional pad found on the D700 and D800 over Canon's multi-controller any day. Now back to terminals, we have your typical flash sync, we have your remote, we've got a USB, however we have HDMI out. This HDMI out is not clean like the D800s. That's a big factor if you're a video guy or girl. Now the Mark III really hasn't put much weight on. It's about the same weight as the Mark II. It's just a few ounces lighter than the D800. However, it's still a cinder block when you put a giant lens on. Now there's one last thing to talk about, and that's the Mark III's battery. This uses the same battery as the Mark II, and that's huge, because the Nikon D800 uses a brand new pack when compared to the D700. That means you can take old Mark II batteries and throw them in the Mark III. So overall, the EOS 5D Mark III has an improved design. Here we are at second base talking about the Canon EOS 5D Mark III's features. And we're going to start with focus. Usually with new models, camera makers tack a few extra focus features to the tool belt. But not Canon. They want gangbusters on the Mark III's AF options. In fact, the autofocus features are so extensive on the Mark III, I could do an entirely separate review on just that alone. So I'm going to be really brief in this review. Go to the full review on technobuffalo.com for all of my AF findings. As you can see, AF has its own dedicated tab in the Mark III menu, and it's five pages long. We'll start with the Mark III's cases, or presets. These are for things like subjects entering the frame or erratically moving subjects. They can all be fine-tuned by different levels of tracking sensitivity, accelerating, decelerating sensitivity, and AF point auto switch. I used the versatile multi-purpose for most scenarios and that really did the trick. However, we did do a go-karting shoot and I used the subject's entering preset. That worked pretty well. But that's not all. You could also adjust the release versus shutter priority, which is basically speed versus accuracy. The camera will not take a picture unless it's focused when you have focus priority and it will just snap away if it's in release priority just to get the shot off. Now the Mark III has 61 AF points compared to the D800's 51 points. There are up to 41 cross-type sensors, depending on which aperture you're in. And for the most part, this camera did an amazing job autofocusing. Now, video mode is a different story on the 5D Mark III. Unlike the D800, which has full-time autofocus in video mode, the Mark III doesn't have that. In fact, you can't even refocus by pressing the shutter button halfway while you're recording a video. You have to focus first, then record. So for pretty much every focusing application in video mode, stick with manual. 
Thanks to its new sensor, the 5D Mark III can reach an ISO ceiling of 102,400, which is just astronomically high. This trumps the Nikon D800 and the 5D Mark II, which have 25,600 caps. Like the Mark II, the Mark III has a 30 second to 1 8,000th second shutter speed with a bulb mode. It has a 63 zone metering system that measures the luminosity around AF points. And I was highly impressed with the results and the exposure I got with shooting in program auto mode. This camera exposes wonderfully. It's not afraid to shoot up the ISO because the sensitivity is so great. Now another cool thing on the Mark III is its HDR mode. Not only could you shoot HDR images with this camera, you could apply artistic filters like bold, vivid, embossed, things like that. And the results are amazing because you're shooting with a full frame camera and there's really no need to go into Photoshop. The artifacts also translated over to multiple exposures. You could take up to nine images and blend them together with artistic effects. And we have exposure bracketing up to seven images at a time. But the Nikon D800 can do nine images, so that's something to consider. The 5D Mark III is an exceedingly fast camera. This camera can do a six frames per second burst rate. That doesn't seem as fast, but when you compare it to the Nikon D800 four frames per second, it does factor in. The reason for the Mark III's speed is its new processing. Not only was I able to rifle through menu options, but I could scroll through pictures like it was a flip book. It was that fast. Also, there was no need to wait for the recording time after I took a long exposure shot. After 30 seconds, the camera immediately displayed the image. In most cases, I have to wait another 30 seconds for the image to store and process. So this camera is so fast. For video mode, our ISO cap was 25,600. Audio level fine tuning was excellent. I had 64 different points that I could adjust the decibel level to, and I could use time code. So the Canon EOS 5D Mark III is excellent when it comes to features. Here at third base, we're gonna talk about the Canon EOS 5D Mark III's image quality. Canon equipped the Mark III with a new 22.3 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor with the company's new Digic 5 Plus image processing. Now let's consider one thing right now. The D800 has 36 megapixels of full frame fury, which means the Mark III only has two thirds of that resolution. Therefore, if you're considering a medium format camera, the D800 might be a viable alternative. Canon jazzed up the video on the Mark III. This camera now records 1080p 30 and 24 frames per second and 720p 60 to name a few. We can also record now in all eye or IPB compression, similar to pro camcorders. All eye means less compression, bigger file sizes, IPB, smaller file sizes, more compression. Files are recorded as H.264 MPEG-4s in the AVC codec. Now for still image quality. I shot in a myriad of environments including fast action go-karting, late night miniature golfing, and a full wedding. What I found with the 5D Mark III is that it's a magic maker. Its high ISO performance is astounding. I was comfortable at 12,800 and even 25,600 in certain instances. However, I would stay away from 51,200 and 102,400 because those images are pretty noisy. Now when it came to RAW versus JPEG quality, it was the classic tale. The colors and the clarity with the RAW images were much better. When it came down to still image quality, it really was all about brand preference. Canon versus Nikon, you know who you are. Now in video mode, I got the same excellent high ISO performance that I got in still image mode. I preferred the high ISO performance and the low light sensitivity to the Nikon D800s. I was able to illuminate a lot more dark places with this camera in my hand. So in video mode, the Mark III was better than the D800 in low light. However, I noticed that Nikon videos had better dynamic range than the Canon did. And one thing that both cameras shared that I'm really not excited about talking about was the gelatinous blob on the go rolling shutter. In terms of the Mark III's audio, it has a built-in stereo microphone. It was okay, so I recommend using something like a Rode stereo video mic via the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now when you do that, you'll notice that unfortunately, DSLRs hype the blanket noise in the background. The Nikon D800 did the same thing, so there's no real difference. If you're serious about audio with the Mark III, get a Beach Tech XLR grip. But overall video, I would actually give the edge to the Mark III over the D800. Now it's time to slide into home with the Buffalo Call on the Canon EOS 5D Mark III. Undoubtedly, this is one of the best full-frame DSLRs on the market, but the big question comes down to 
the difference between the D800 and the 5D Mark III? And I think the answer is brand loyalty. Both have their pluses and minuses, but I don't see either model being the omnipotent ruler over the other. So if you've got a drawer full of Nikkor lens, go for the D800. If you've got Canon L glass out the wazoo, go for the 5D Mark III. For the entire review, a lot more information than what I've given you today, go to technobuffalo.com. Until next time, Al, Canon EOS 5D Mark III, you later.